All right, good morning. Good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of YouTube. This is Pastor Dow. Well, I have a sarcastic nimbus uh, that ask this question. If you are, if you are a so-called pastor and you really truly think that you understand this Bible, then give me uh, the marriage qualifications. And what I'll do is rather than just answering this one person, I answer the majority of the people that spy on our liberty and listen and watch. And I'm going to take my glasses off for this one because I know that you out there are not ready for this answer. And not only you're going to find out that I know what I'm talking about, you're going to find out that you live in a society, a social system, and a religious system that does not know what the hell it's talking about. That's what you're getting ready to find out. And I'm going to tell you right now that this is going to be raw. This is going to be real talk, uncut. And if you don't have the spiritual maturity to be able to handle truth, you may want to stop this video right now and go on some somewhere else because you ain't gonna most of you are not gonna be able to handle what I'm getting ready to say. I'm gonna try to do this in under 10 minutes. We'll see, okay? I'm just gonna I can't that means I can't quote everything. I just gotta give you the facts straight up. First of all, number one. If I'm not a pastor to many of you out there, yet I am a pastor to some. And they are the seal of my pastorship. I have hundreds of people that receive me as they pastor. They support me in what I'm doing as they pastor. And they love me as my pa as their pastor. And, and I don't care if you don't believe what I say or not. I have other people that I concentrate on. I'm not the, the type of person to get out here and argue with people on whether I'm a pastor or not. I realize that I'm not a pastor to everybody out there in the world, and I'm not trying to be. Uh, so it makes no difference to me uh, whether you believe it or not. I'm only concerned about those who have the ears to hear and the eyes to see, because Jesus said, if they hear you, then they would hear me. So it's simple enough. Qualifications of marriage. I'm getting ready to bust open your paradigm. And it's going to get ugly here for a second, but let's go ahead and run through this for a second. Out here in this pagan, satanic American system, you believe that marriage is, is once you find a girl or a man you're going to get married to, you go down to the courthouse, you get a marriage license, and then you go in front of what you call some priest, mop holder, or whatever it is, and somebody signs that marriage contract, the state don't care, and that makes you married, all right? However, that's not biblically right. And mind you, this government said in 1982-83, um, Public Law 97-280, that the Bible is the word of God. It's the law of the land. Well, let's test that. Let's test that. Number one, when you read the Bible, it lays out marriage, and marriage is intended. See, this is the reason why this is an evil and an adulterous generation. Marriage is intended for a man to get married to a virgin. And that woman is his wife. She is not ever to go out and commit adultery on that man. If she does, death, stone in the death for her and the man she committed adultery with. Marriage qualifications is only for a virgin woman and a man marrying a woman that is a virgin. I'm telling you the way that it should be. It should have been. You see, I don't have a lick of confidence in my generation, 20 years behind me, but I do have a little confidence for those that are 40 years behind me. You know the reason why? Because we can do something about them. We can help minimize their mistakes. Uh, straightway, we marry a lot of people who have never had any sex whatsoever at all until they get married. And the marriage is not a contract with a state. A marriage is, is when that man goes inside that woman and he pops her cherry and that woman becomes his wife. That is what marriage is. What you call marriage out here in secular society is, is a girl having all kind of men inserting themselves into her, putting their stuff into her. She has four, five, six partners in high school. She has 15, 20 partners in college. And then 
when she decides to settle down and get so-called married to some simp man, you call that marriage. I call that man, you just got finished getting married not only to an adulterer, but you just got finished marrying a bitch. A bitch, according to the etymology of the word, is a female dog. And a female dog, when it's in heat, it will mount anything that comes its way. It don't care what dog comes along. And that is the women in this society. How many women out there today are getting married to the man that they first had sex with? You see, you hadn't been taught right because it's an evil and it's an adulterous generation. Now, qualifications real quick. All right. If the woman is a virgin, she's qualified to be a wife. If she wasn't a virgin, then she's a concubine, period. So a lot of you, you have after the biblical sword, you think you have wives, but what you really truly have are concubines. 90, I will say 80% of the marriages that fail in the United States of America, they fail because of the woman. And the reason being is because she has multiple personalities. She has had so many men DNA inserted in her that you don't know what personality you're going to deal with at any given time. I watch it. I see it all the time. There is a difference when a woman gets married to a man when she's a virgin, as opposed to many of you women out here that has had many partners. I watch the character. I counsel all the time. I deal with it. There's just a total difference between a wife that is a virgin when she came into this and a woman that goes into a marriage that's been turned more times than a doorknob. Now, according to the Bible, um, the only people that would not be classified as concubines when they get married or whores are widows, war brides, divorcees, and the ones who fit the Leverite law. Did you hear what I said? Widows, war brides, divorcees, and the ones that fit the Leverite law. I've already done lost many. You, I've already lost your theolo theologians. I've lost your pastors. I, I lost all of them already. All right. A war bride is when an Israelite went out to war, he saw a woman and he had desire unto her. He was to bring her back. She was to mourn her parents for 30 days, shave her head, pair her nails. And then after that, he could go into her after 30 days and she would be his wife. All right. According to Deuteronomy 24, if a woman got divorced or put away from uh, a husband, put her away and given her a bill. All right then she is authorized to go out and marry only whom she will in the Most High Yah. And she could become a wife then. If a woman, <clears throat> her husband dies, and if she is in a tribe and her husband, she doesn't, her husband did not leave a male seed for her, then it is commanded, according to the Bible, that she get married to a, or she allows her husband brother to go into her to raise up seed for her husband all right and then a widow a widow if a woman if she if, if her husband dies all right i just got finished taking lever right off if her husband dies and she gets married to another israelite she's free because death has set her free from the contract then she is allowed to be married and to be called a wife. These are the only classifications that the Bible speak about. All this damn whoredom, all these women out here that's done had four, five, six, seven partners and men and certain DNA all up in them and stuff. That's why they're schizophrenic as hell. That's why they, they, they damn don't have no, they coming and going. This damn feminist movement is birthed out of men's personalities that function through a woman's body, DNA, I might add, that's causing all this confusion in conflict. And then they start acting like men while they have women bodies fighting against the other man. So if you want to take my advice, younger generation, 40 years behind me, you wait for yourself to get established as a man, find you a virgin. Because you don't find virgin, you're already going to have trouble in the flesh anyway when you get married. Period. I don't care if she's a virgin or not. You're going to have trouble in the flesh. Um, and it doesn't, you know what's amazing about the Bible? The Bible never, ever, ever warns a woman about a wicked man. 
But when you go into the scriptures, I'm talking about the Bibles that all you people go to church and you think you believe, go in there and see how many times it warns a, a man of a wicked woman. You'd heard the truth, and that's the truth straightway.